Hello, hello, and welcome. Of course, before we get started, we want to uh, acknowledge the traditional owners on the land on which we live, learn, and create on today, paying respects to others past, present, and emerging. Now, turning some music on, we are going to say hello to Sophie. How are you doing today, Sophie? I'm good. How are you, Diana? Very, very good. Very excited for this extra special a little bit longer stream um <laughs> and just having having a wonderful time uh but speaking of also a wonderful time uh if you're tuning in on anywhere else uh youtube or twitter or anything like that be sure to hop on over to uh behance.net slash live that's the chat that we'll be looking at for questions uh today and that's where you can hang out with everyone else watching the stream so be sure to pop in there and of course if you have any questions as we go along just throw them in the chat and we will get to as many as we can uh, but without further 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 ado goodness me um how about so for you take over <laughs> for a second and uh, introduce yourself to everyone who might not be familiar with you and your wonderful work yeah so i am a typographer slash graphic designer um, and I dabble in very colorful, very animated sort of realms. Um, typography is sort of my specialty. I have a real love of language and that's kind of where that springs from. So yeah, anything wordplay, any like terrible puns, that's, you know, that's, that's what's really precious to me. So hopefully we'll be diving into a bit of that today. Excellent. I think we just might. Um, I will also <laughs> now show your work because this session today um, is heavily inspired by a little little project you did for 36 days of type uh, yeah some so <laughs> it's quite possibly the silliest idea of mine to date mm -hmm. um, but yeah I, I had this kind of this sort of thought that crossed my mind a few months ago I was like hmm what if I made an entire alphabet out of butts and it's the sort of thought you have that most people I feel like would just be like, let's just put that to one side. That's a, that's a weird rabbit hole to go down. But um, the 36 days of type challenge was sort of coming up. I'm like, why don't I just explore this and see where it takes me? And it's honestly been the most fun, just ridiculous little adventure into, um, I don't know, Buttville. <laughs> <laughs> I made, yeah, 26 different letters, all of them inspired by various types of butts, all of them animated um, using different types of animation as well. So there's, you know, there's a bit of 2D animation, you know, frame by frame sort of thing mm. in Photoshop. Um, there's a lot of stop motion work in there that's, you know, photographed and then pulled together in Photoshop and After Effects. Incredible. And then a lot of After Effects related things as well, where, um, you know, just using some pretty simple techniques, but yeah, combining them all together to create <laughs> letter forms made out of butts, basically. I don't know else how to explain it, really. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, that's what it is. And it is wonderful <laughs> and it is beautiful. Um, just amazing work. Now, for today, um, we're going to be doing something inspired by this, going to be doing. Yeah, so we're going to again as a bit of a springboard. So, um, a lot of the techniques that I've used in here, specifically the more sort of After Effects related ones, that's what we're going to be diving into. Um, there's a few things that I sort of learned from scratch for this, which mm -hmm. like it's still pretty new to me that I'm really excited to, to go into together. Um, specifically this, this guy here, <clears throat> it's a little bit naughty, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, in good spirit. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a technique kind of, I guess it's essentially a video collage where you piece together different elements of footage and sort of blend it together to create mm -hmm. one, um, one sort of unified piece. Um, so yeah, we'll be doing a little bit of that. We'll be doing some path animation. We'll be making some butts jiggle. I think it's going to be good fun. 
Excellent, excellent. Well, um, speaking of fun, that's that's something that we'll be chatting out, chatting out, chatting about. Goodness me, uh, throughout the stream, <laughs> and just kind of how how important it is to be silly, which I think is going to be a major theme in this this stream today. Um, Absolutely. But, I should say, for the puns to get started, without further ado, <laughs> um, again, how about we just dive right into the project, but first. Yeah, let's do it, but first, <laughs> the way we should all <laughs> start our days, but first. So <laughs> um, I've created a piece of lettering that's going to be the basis for what we're working on today. Mm -hmm. And like I said, kind of using the alphabet as a springboard. The word cheeky is something that I use all the time. I think it's, it, I think it's charming. I think it's, you know, but adjacent. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of in that same sort of realm, but it also is very just mischievous and curious. And I feel like embodies a lot of the, the things that I just love about um, typography and visual design generally. So that's, that's our starting point. <laughs> I've spent a little bit of time sort of laying this out in Illustrator. Um, you can see I've already got all of my layers set up on the side here. So I've got mm. you know, my background layer and then each of the letters is a different um, a different piece and I will also just show you um, I've actually set up so the letter the two E's that I've got here are actually um, stroke rather than outline oh. there's a reason for that which once we dive into After Effects I will explain a little bit more but it's just going to make my life a bit easier when we get to that section but everything else is pretty much just um, already expanded to outlines. So we've got our, our nice little pipe piece, which actually kind of works as a static piece. Like I'd be quite happy yeah, just no, to do this as a static piece. But we're all about being a little bit extra. So we are gonna bring this into After Effects and make it dance around a little. Um, that's kind of, yeah, you mentioned anthropomorphic type mm. earlier. Yes, Flynn's you favorite like word to say on stream, anthropomorphic. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've come undone in the past by that word. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but basically just giving each of these little letter forms their own personality, their own little human characteristics, making them, mm. making them characters, really. Yeah. Um, we're already sort of on the way with these little faces that I've drawn. You know, we've kind yeah. of... Um, cute. <laughs> we've already got you know, a bit of personality starting to emerge. But I think once you start to layer in those elements of movement, it really brings it to life and I'm excited to, to do that. Mm. So I think the first thing that I want to show you, oh, and this is, this is another little, sorry, let me just quickly jump back to Illustrator here. This looks like a stray rectangle, um, but it is an important little piece of the um, process here. It's actually going to be my little... Um, guide, I suppose. Size guide. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> Excellent. I was wondering, it was like, oh, is that is that rectangle what I think it is? Because uh, I think <laughs> it's an unknown, not unknown. It's a un underrated is the word that I was looking for. Uh, mm -hmm. Trick in the designer's playbook of you use shapes and like squares and rectangles to <laughs> to basically not yeah. have to set up the guides and rulers every single time. Um, <laughs> so if you're looking to designers uh, document, you'll just see stray rectangles <laughs> all over the yeah. place. Um, and I don't know if you ever get to like a level of uh, you know craftsmanship where you don't still rely mm -hmm. on the humble rectangle. <laughs> Honestly, I, if it's not broken, why, why try to fix it? I, it's a perfect system and um, it's so easy to use. So why not use it? Exactly, exactly. So um, let's start with the letter H here. So my, my little vision for this H, if I just switch that layer off for a second, what I want to happen here is for... Um, the hand to not be visible at all at the beginning and for it to sort of emerge out of the H and give us a little wave. Mm -hmm. um, the element of surprise is something that I think is really important in all of this as well, just having a little unexpected plot twists that happen mm -hmm. throughout the animation. Yeah, give it character yeah. and like a bit of pizzazz. Yeah, yeah. So 
I'm sort of working backwards here. I've started with my hand drawing and what I'm going to do is kind of reduce it to nothing using the path um, feature. So first what I'm going to do is this little pink rectangle is going to act as a bit of a guide. So I'm just going to knock the opacity down a tiny bit and then lock that layer and then I'm not really going to worry about it for a moment. Um, the layer I do want to look at is this underlying one here. So if we open up into the contents, into group one, into path one, this guy here is what we're going to be playing with. Now, before I do anything, I'm going to drop a keyframe and make sure that I actually have this position locked into place. Mm -hmm. um, that's a mistake I have made many times before where I forget to do that and I do all this path manipulation and then I get to the end and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I did not lock my initial keyframe. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I'm going to do now, so I've got my first keyframe there. I'm just going to jump forward. It doesn't really matter the amount. We're going to tweak this later, just a certain amount. So we're going to um, have a bit of space between those two. And I'm going to just sort of play with the positioning. Of oh all no, the, the hands disappear. I know. <laughs> it's it's going to look bad for a moment. Okay, it's a bit graphic, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like oh no it's, it's gonna Money. look oh you go i was just gonna say it's gonna it's gonna be a bit of a mess until we sort of tidy this up yeah but it'll just be it'll just be a few seconds essentially mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really just pulling all of these keyframes down and i'm shortening all of those bezier handles because i'm mm -hmm. gonna try and get a relatively straight line um probably not going to be perfect first go first pancake never is nope. that's fine and also you know doing it live on stream uh adds just a, a, a sprinkle of of uh pressure it's and, the and drama time, time it's the pressure. Yeah. <laughs> it's the drama <laughs> get yeah, into it darling mm -hmm. um yeah it looks it, it looks like a hot mess but just, just bear with me because we will have something that is <laughs> remotely decent in a moment. Um, and I probably didn't really need a rectangle. Like, I mean, it's not that hard a shape to kind of eyeball, but it's more just so I've got just some sort of visual reference rather than relying strictly on your own um, memory. Yeah. The, the letter. Excellent. Actually, curious question from me um, before we mm -hmm. get into any of the ones we I'm sure we'll get from chat. Uh, well, first off, actually, we have a, a pun that I think you, you will really appreciate Great. from Michael. Uh, also, hello, Michael and Annika. Welcome, welcome to the stream. And Luda as well. Um, Michael was saying that, oh, the letters look like friends. Or dare I say, <laughs> oh, hey. that's good. That's good. We can stay. <laughs> yes, Michael, you can stay. And can uh, stay. if you got any questions um, about making button in After Effects uh, or any other kind of <laughs> anthropomorphic feature, uh, let us know in the chat. Uh, Did you think that was that. a sentence? that you would ever be saying in a professional oh, capacity. absolutely not. Um, but I, <laughs> I could only if anyone has any questions about butts and after yeah. effects, speak Just now. The <laughs> no, this is definitely uh, a dream come true for me, to be honest, to be able to ask that question in the workplace during the live stream uh, while just having fun. So there you go. Uh, but for... <laughs> See, now I can't, I can't Every say time. We need, someone needs to keep a tally of the number of times we say but inadvertently. Yes, friend, <coughs> um, I hope this is not too much of you, but if you could keep a tally of how many times you say but, that would be, that would be wonderful. Um, we should take however, that now and then check in in 90 minutes and exactly. see who is closest. How, how <laughs> low we have fallen. However, I will say to, to make your job a little bit easier, with this 
because you were saying how it could start or how it could actually be a static uh, mm. sort of type piece. When you created this, did you create it through uh, a sketch in your sketchbook or did you create it straight in Illustrator? I did do some pencil sketches, just really mm. rough, kind of figuring out, you know, what, where could I put a little face or what's, what's the movement that could go here? Where might I add a little limb of some description? Um, but because I, you know, because I just did a whole project on this and I was kind of already had in mind the sort of skills that I wanted to, to showcase with this, yeah. I pretty quickly then moved into, into a digital space. Um, but that is, you know, pencil on paper is always the best place to start. I feel it's just, it's quicker and it's looser and you get less hung up on the perfection of it. You're just mm -hmm. kind of getting stuff out. Um, so this is pretty close to being a flat line. It's not perfect, but I mean, in reality, Nobody. we're going to be looking at it. <laughs> ding! In reality, we're going to be looking at it. That's the butt noise, by the way, that ding. Yeah. Um, in reality, we're going to be looking at it much smaller, mm. but let me turn off our little template so we can get a decent look at what we've just done. And we now have this little hand. Oh, wow, look at it grow. Yeah. Now the speed is off and also the direction it's going is off because what we want is to start with nothing and then for it to grow. So I'm actually mm. just going to flip these keyframes around so that we're going in the correct direction. Um, and probably speed that up a bit too because mm. we want it to happen quite quickly. Mm. Amazing. And uh, just, just letting you know as well that Flynn was already keeping a tally and we are currently at a, a, <laughs> of course he was. <laughs> a, a butt count, which is now going to be higher of, uh, I'd say nine or 10, which certainly is not high enough. Um, so we're going to have to the, the night is young. game. <laughs> oh, so good. Um, beautiful. Okay. So we've got our little hand emerging. But what we now want to do is to make it do a little wave. Um, and so we're going to use our trusty friend. Actually, before I do that, let me just return this to some kind of normal state here. So we, we come back down again and maybe we might even speed the return a little. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so. And by, use our puppet it up, tool. are you just putting the the keyframes uh, closer just or bringing them in. away from each other? Yep. Excellent. And and all of that is, you know, we, if we're not happy with the timing later on, we can come back and adjust this. And actually, probably what I'll do at this point too is just add a bit of ease to that, um, just to just to make it feel a little bit better. You know, just. <laughs> I never like to leave a keyframe without ease. It just doesn't feel as good. Mm. Now we're going to use, yeah, the puppet pin tool, which is one of my favorites. We've used it a bunch on Adobe Live in the past. We'll go over it quickly um, just to kind of show you how you can combine it with this technique of manipulating the path because in the two in combination work really beautifully together. The only thing is um, it is, a little bit difficult combining with other transform properties. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't really understand the back end of this, but it's essentially, um, I think the way that the, the, the tool works is it's sort of placing a bit of a mesh grid over your artwork and it's moving mm -hmm. the grid around rather than the, the artwork itself. Right. Yeah. So in order to just get the, the tools to work nicely with each other, I will usually, um, pre-comp a layer um, before applying uh, the puppet pin tool to it just to make sure that it's not going to um, conflict with my path transform tool which we've just done a, a little bit of work on. So we've got hand emerging and now we're going to get our trusty puppet pin tool and you can see that it's actually this whole canvas is now um, a layer rather than just the artwork. Oh, so I need I to see. Specific, like I yeah, I need to be quite specific with where I'm placing these pins. Mm. Um, so I'm just gonna chuck a bunch in here because I actually don't want this area to move at all. 
I want these bits to stay pretty stationary and this is way more than mm. I actually need. The one that I do want to move is this top one in the hand here. So I've, I've given it more than it needs, um, but that is A-OK. -okay. And actually the only one, we can ignore all of these other ones because they're not going to move at all. The one that we do want to move is this top guy here. You can see it's dropped a little keyframe. Mm -hmm. And we want to just give it a little wave. To the, let's see, it would be shimmy to the left or I'm trying to like <laughs> get the orientation where like if the thumb is there, what what direction are we going in? But just <laughs> I'm gonna settle with that. <laughs> I'm happy with that. Um so yeah. now we've got a little bit of a wave happening, which is cute. Very cute. Um, and now that we've got these keyframes roughly where we want them, we can just copy and paste them a few times if we want to, you know, have it be a little bit more of a wave. Mm -hmm. And then we can return. So copying that initial first keyframe and pasting it at the end so that we sort of return to our starting position. And then it's going to drop back down where we had our path animation um, in the pre-comp. Excellent. And just oh, so simple. So few steps and the results are, you'd think you'd done more. Um, I know, I know. It makes you look good. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just going to tighten these keyframes a bit because I reckon, I think we want a bit more of a, like someone's really excited to see you. I think mm. just looking at the little face that I've like, given oh this. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not a like chill, hey, how's it going? Mm. It's like, oh my god, I'm so excited to see you kind of wave. So yeah. that's <laughs> just speeding it up a smidge. Um, and we will also add a bit of ease oops, on these keyframes here to just to smooth out that movement a little bit more, because why not? And uh, for those watching at home, ease would basically be that it's uh, tapering the movement, if if I remember correctly. So it will start a little bit slower, then go to the the speed that you want, and then go back a little bit slow. Is that have I understood that correctly? Yeah, I think so. It sounds complicated to try and explain it, mm. but by default, a keyframe will just move in a linear. Um, direction so the speed remains the same the speed is constant the whole way through when we add ease we're starting slow and then we're speeding up and then slowing down as we get to our final key point so it's just a little bit of um I mean it's how you would move in real life too like mm. if you're about to to do something there's there's like a bit of a slow movement at the start and then it's Feels quick like when you're actually energy. yeah yeah so like a uh, equivalent to a uh, roller coaster, I would say, and um, yeah, uh, the, the sort of the <laughs> no, I won't make that comparison. Uh, I was gonna try to get another butt joke in, but uh, <laughs> now's your chance. Don't hold back. <laughs> what are you like doing? The, like the curve of a butt. So you go <laughs> slow, and then you go up, and then you go down. There you go. <laughs> the butt curve. The old yeah, the butt curve. curve. It's no longer the ease, ease trick or ease <laughs> button. It's the, it's the butt curve. <laughs> um, so that I think is looking pretty cute now. So the mm. rest of the H is staying stationary, which is what I want. I just want the focus to be on this hand moving, mm. doing a really quick little yeah, wave. It kind of has a, a bit of a wrist uh, to it. Yeah. And I think we probably could, if we wanted to, jump into here, into it, back into our letter H, and maybe even bring these keyframes a little bit closer because we've got a bit of time between when the wave finishes and when we come back down. Even closer still, I reckon. While you do that, I will just give you a heads up to a suggestion that Michael has made. Um, how, how, what if, I should say, the hand, the H hand, slaps the cheek of the E? <laughs> I did think about that. <laughs> um, I do, do. That do. thought did definitely cross my mind. Um, 
it would be a little more complex, I think, because mm -hmm. the shape of the hand would have to change. Like if you imagine what a slap would look like where our hand is going to rotate a little bit exactly. and it's a little bit, a little bit more complex, but I, I, I thoroughly enjoy that idea. And um, yeah. maybe on the next one, we can have it. Plus, 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 plus it. Michael. Yeah. <laughs> So I reckon that's looking pretty good now and I'm happy with that. So why don't we move on to actually just keep that a quick little save. And, we and while you save, our... I'm also going to take a sip of whole water. Uh, Ooh, I might do the same actually. <laughs> my uh, speaking voice is what that's called. <laughs> You've done this before. There we go. <laughs> it's almost like I am a professional. Um, almost. <laughs> The next thing I want to do is turn my attention to these letter E's here, which I have drawn in this way. I've gone with the sort of curly E because I think it looks more like a butt. Um, and my sort of plan for this little portion of the animation is for a bit of a butt bump. So the two Ooh, nice. E slash butts are going to... <clears throat> sort of move away a little bit and then butt butts <laughs> but butts. english is a silly language mm -hmm. they're going to butt butts and then sort of just have a bit of a a bit of a wobble as they return to their starting positions mm -hmm. and we're going to do that it's a similar technique to what we did with the h actually we're manipulating the path itself mm -hmm. um, but in this instance we've got a stroke with um, like it's an open shape just with a stroke applied rather than a closed shape with mm -hmm. anchor points right around the outside. So let's dive into those sections. And while you're doing that, we do have um, sort of two combined questions, but I'm going to make them uh, separate cheeks. Uh, so first from Flynn, <laughs> uh, when you decide what animation, uh, decide what the animation is going to be, I'm going to say that again. When do you decide what the animation is going to be? Do you do it before you start in After Effects or while you're in After Effects? So is it, you know, you're sketching it down on a page and you're doing uh, like motion lines of like the, the three strokes sort of that this is jiggling mm. or, or do mm. you kind of work that out when you see it all come together in uh, Illustrator or, or After Effects? I think it's probably a bit of a push pull in both those sort of areas. I think mm -hmm. I try to have an idea where I'm heading before I sort of open up After Effects mm -hmm. um, because a lot of the time that will affect how I set the file up. Like in this instance, this is a really good example of that actually. Um, because I have sort of a, a vision of where I want this to go, mm -hmm. I know just from past experience that it's going to be easier for me to do this if it's stroke rather than a closed shape. And so I've right. designed it yeah. that way. Um, oftentimes, <laughs> how I imagine it is not how it looks. Yeah. <laughs> in which case, that's when we do a bit of a reassessing mm -hmm. and plan B, C, D, etc. Once we're in the After Effects and I'm trying to salvage <laughs> um, the idea. So it's, yeah, so it is a little bit of both, but I do generally try to have a, a bit of a plan where possible. Mm. Yeah, a bit of, bit of a plan is, is always good. Um, and similar to the previous question is, uh, are you more iterative or more of a planner? I, I could argue that you can be iterative it, wow, I should have some more water in a second. You can be <laughs> iterative and a planner at the same time because you could have your mm. base plan and then <clears throat> there sort of at certain stages within that plan you could iterate. Um, but I think wouldn't you have to be both. Question, Sophie. I, yeah, I think you do have to be both because, I mean, I've, I don't think I've ever done a design the first time and been like, yeah, no changes needed. Like mm. I always have 12 different drafts of a thing before it's finished. Um, and I don't know, maybe you plan to be iterative. Maybe iterative is the plan. Mm. Um, I just, yeah. yeah I'm, for the egg. Uh, conundrum <laughs> now. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't think. 
probably if you were doing something that you'd done a million times before and you knew exactly how it was going to go, mm. maybe you would sort of nail it a little earlier on. But uh, I don't know. It's not really been my experience. I think that, yeah, my process is definitely um, <laughs> doing many, many versions of a thing until it's Feels something just that silly. I'm happy with. <laughs> yeah, the right amount of silly, exactly. Mm. That actually brings me, I'm going to do a massive segue, so bear with me. Um, <laughs> speaking of getting the right amount of silly, uh, something that mm. we talked about just in the lead up to the stream and uh, in the sort of few, few seconds before is this idea of personal work and client work and sort of where mm. the line of seriousness or, or sensibility where that kind of lies. and you were saying that, you know, it can be expected that a project like this isn't necessarily like a client project. This is very much a personal project. Um, but then as of releasing this, you were saying that a lot of, you know, more client facing people uh, were really into it. And maybe that the tides uh, are changing for how silly client projects can be. I definitely think there's uh, a bit of a trend towards silliness mm -hmm. and it makes me so happy to see that because I think for such a long time, you know, design's been so serious, it's so serious. Mm -hmm. Like we have to be, you know, all black everything, you know, crisp lines, all very serious, you know, I don't know. Maybe that's not true. Maybe it's just been like uh, an observation of a particular slice of the industry that I've kind of been looking at. But I think, yeah, I definitely feel like I'm seeing more bold colors, more just mm. whimsy, more joy, more, um, more playfulness in design across the board. And I it just, it makes me really happy. It does. Yeah. Absolutely. No, it's, uh, <laughs> Flynn was making uh, a wonderful comment of uh, clients are people too, believe it or not. Uh, I, know, <laughs> I know in my heart that they're people, Flynn. I know. <laughs> but sometimes, no, I'm kidding. I did also have to double check that I wasn't wearing a black t-shirt when you <laughs> first mentioned it. Um, usually I do because it makes plays easy with the with the green screen and everything. But I, it is. A well, I mean, you gotta be you gotta be practical today. as well, you know. Yeah, gotta be practical. <laughs> um, but no, you're absolutely right. I love seeing how it's turned to be more playful. That really, clients and and brands and everyone is just leaning into the more playful side of of design and, and illustration and, and type and well and you made a really interesting in point when we were chatting mm. earlier too that um it sort of feels like a bit of an antidote to this universal i don't know yeah, just onslaught of bad news yeah you know but it's if you know if that's the the direction we kind of correct in from all the all the heaviness of just mm. news and politics and you know all that stuff then and that feels like a really positive thing as well. That feels, yeah, I don't know, like universal like nature art is therapy healing. or something. <laughs> nature is healing. <laughs> I like that, yep. <laughs> Let's see. So we are now um, still making the letters jiggle uh, or the E's doing the, yes. the budding against each other. Yes. So, um, similar to what I was doing with the H before, I'm literally just picking up these anchor points and moving them and placing a few keyframes. So you can kind of see, I've sort of already done it with the base E here, where we've just mm -hmm. got a bit Ooh. of a bit of a jiggle kind of happening. Um, mm -hmm. It's a little bit janky, but we haven't applied any E's and we've not really finessed the timing of those keyframes yet. So it's, it's not terrible for a starting point. Um, but I'm just just playing around with these keyframes a little bit to um, get that movement feeling a bit natural. 
Excellent. And um, we are actually, I can't say that we are um, halfway just yet, but it's closer to halfway than not halfway, unfortunately, because time, time does fly when you're animating. But, um, it feels like a riddle. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. um, but I just wanted to let everyone know in the chat while I adjust my chair that if you have any questions, again, for us, um, doesn't have to be but specific, um, but we do appreciate but them. But bonus all. points. Yeah, bonus, bonus points, points if they are. <laughs> but specific. Um, <laughs> pop them in the chat and, and Flynn will pass them on to me and I will uh, ask them to Sophie um, as we're going along. So just a final few little adjustments here just to um you know we could have just done one keyframe where it moves like this and then goes back to the starting position mm -hmm. but if we really stop and think about a nice butt for a moment mm -hmm. if we just close our eyes <laughs> and imagine a lovely butt uh -huh. it jiggles in a way where you know it's gonna it's gonna take a moment to settle back down again mm -hmm. there's gonna be a bit of back and forth so that's that's sort of <laughs> the movement that i'm trying to emulate a little bit here fantastic just really capturing the realism in your piece um because <laughs> we can't have unrealistic butts in this illustration no 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 i will not stand for that <laughs> <laughs> um, so we we kind of we've kind of got a nice little jiggle happening here mm -hmm. i agree a, bit of, a little bit of ease just to sort of smooth that out a bit. Already Excellent. that's looking better. Yeah. And the other thing that we can do, because um, this path is separate to this path, we can actually <laughs> offset these keyframes just a tiny bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. To give the cheeks a little bit of independence <laughs> from each other. <laughs> this is not twins. <laughs> exactly <laughs> um so if we let me undo that and let's have a look at what that movement looks like so that's mm -hmm. everything kind of happening at the same time and it's good but if we if we just bring that bottom keyframe like just one frame difference <gasps> now you can see oh, a yeah. little bit of you know, there's one sort of leading the charge and the other's following along and it's sort of bouncing back off it. And there's, a, you know, there's a bit of, um, a bit more, more energy to it. More, uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But I reckon that's actually looking pretty fun as well. So we've got, our, if we start from the, hang on, let me zoom out a bit here. We start from our little, we've got a wave mm -hmm. and then that disappears. And we've got our little butts doing a little butt bump. Cute. <laughs> the nice thing is too that it's tasteful, right? They just let it ease. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> um, but speaking of taste, mm -hmm. and also Flynn was just giving me an update on the butt count, and uh, we're making we numbers. Have? The numbers yeah. are rising. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, Good, good news on that front, but I won't, I won't say, <laughs> I say what the, the current uh, number is just yet because I want to keep you in suspense. Uh, Ooh, we do, however, right. have a question. So, whom did you get mm -hmm. your butt inspiration, new word, courtesy of Flynn, uh, for this project? <laughs> did you have a muse? Oh, that's a great question. Um... There is one artist whose work that I just absolutely adore, who I kind of refer back to a lot because I think what she does is just so different to what mm -hmm. I've seen anyone else do. Um, her name is Jenna Josepha. She's disappeared off Instagram. She used to be on Instagram. I can't find her on there anymore, but her online portfolio still exists. And she has a really beautiful way of blending footage and um, animation, so 2D animation mm -hmm. and actual footage of human bodies. She has a lot of butts in her work as well, um, which... But of course. But of course, which is uh, a big inspiration, I guess. 
Um, but I think, yeah, there's something in the spirit of making something that sort of appears a bit risque, but in reality, it's mm. not at all. Like, it's just a butt. It's just a butt. Yeah. Everyone's got a butt. It's not, it's neither here nor there. It's not overtly sexual. It's just a part of the human body and it's nice to celebrate it. And mm. um, yeah, there's something, there's something that's a bit revolutionary in that as well, I think. Yeah. Um, but definitely yeah. go and check out her work because yeah, she's, She's just incredible and I love everything that she's created. She does a lot of music videos as well, which, ah. which are very cool. Yeah. Which, and that actually brings us nicely to the next thing that we're going to do, which, um, which is inspired by her directly. Mm -hmm. And that's that blending of um, actual footage with illustration. Yes. So if we refer back to our little letter K here, um, that's sort of the direction that we're heading in. I've taken the liberty of shooting a little bit of footage. It's not going to be butts mm -hmm. because we discussed this and we thought yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a bit of a logistical moderation nightmare if we have a giant butt on yeah. screen <laughs> the whole time. However, this technique still works really beautifully with just any, um, any type of footage. Mm -hmm. So um, in keeping with the sort of cheeky spirit of this piece, I thought I've got a nice big patch of, of landscape in the middle of this cave here that it would be quite nice to maybe put a little tongue poke on. So Ooh. we'll maybe stick some lips on and the lips are going to poke a tongue out. Excellent. So, man, it took me so many times to shoot this also. <laughs> An embarrassing number of times. Hard work. <laughs> Um, it's a real trip filming your own face up this close in high definition. I will tell you that. <laughs> you won't catch me doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so try to ignore the, um, the clogged pores and the pimples. What we're going to do is basically just cut out the area around the mouth. Mm -hmm. And this is the new thing that I learned. Normally what I would do is sort of jump around between like you know, Premiere or Final Cut or Photoshop and, and sort of do a mix of editing styles until, I, until I've got what I need. Mm. You can actually do the whole thing in After Effects because of course you can. Um, <clears throat> the way that you do that is so I've got the um, footage in my timeline here and I just double click to open it up in its own sort of window. And if we scroll all the way down here and I select my brush tool, we actually can, if you select the alpha channel, mm -hmm. you actually can just like paint away the footage. Oh, wow. And then so when alpha we go level, back. Would that be like an alpha mask? Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly uh -huh. what it is. So when we go back here, we just got this really lovely soft feather on the edge. Mm. And this was like a revelation to me. I'm like, why didn't I know how to do this the whole time? Because <laughs> I would have saved many hours of many projects. But I know it now, so that's all good. We can use it going forward. Um, the other nice thing with this is if you kind of overshoot, similar to how you do in Photoshop, you can just flip these around and paint it back in. So nice. you've still got your footage underneath. Um, the one thing that you do need to be mindful of though, is that you want to have your player head right at the beginning of the clip. Cause if you're somewhere <laughs> in the middle, it's only going to paint on that frame. Oh, <clears throat> good night. Um, so yeah, you kind of have to do a little bit of trial and error to make sure that you've collected the area that you need. And then once I've sort of got it roughly what I need, I'll then, um, just to kind of make the feather a little bit looser, I'll just go and soften that edge a bit more with, um, so I've taken the opacity down and I've increased the brush size. So I'm just gonna feather that a little bit more. And then maybe even take a bit more off the top. Excellent. And this is going to obviously help it blend into uh, the letter yeah. form uh, much, much better. Absolutely. Um, I mean, you probably could achieve a similar thing with 
you know, if you just cut it out with, you know, the pen tool and then applied a bit of a blur to that. But I, mm. I, I just feel like I get a more painterly sort of feel when I have an actual brush and I can go in and just sort of, you know, just soften one particular edge rather than the entire thing. Like you've just got a little bit more control with it. And so then if we flip back, we've now got a horrifying pair of floating lips. And I think I might have knocked out, I think I might have taken a bit of the opacity out of the actual lip. So let me just jump back in here and paint that back in just in my have. You can see that brightening up a little bit. That's better. Um, so now, oops, we're going to just shrink this down a tiny bit so we can kind of roughly place it where we want it. Um, it's going to look a little messy for the first while. Again, we, we're going to refine and sort of adjust and that's, that's totally fine. Um, but now we've got a bit <laughs> of... Uh, the other thing with this is that it's really going to knock out your um, your render time because yes. it's a bit of a complex sort of um, undertaking. We're not just working with vectors anymore. We've got mm. actual footage that is, um, oh, I think I maybe didn't follow my own advice there when I painted back in on that lip. Let me open that up again. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> cool, cool, cool. Okay, so now we've got our little slice of <laughs> tongue poking here. Um, it still looks a bit of a hot mess. Um, that's because obviously the colors are completely long. It's not blending uh, mm -hmm. completely wrong and it's not blending at all. But again, this is something where in the past I probably would have, you know, taken it in a Photoshop and tried to adjust the colors that way. <laughs> Photoshop kind of struggles a little bit when you start bringing heavy um, video files in. Mm. Um, but After Effects has quite a lot of the same tools and I found you can get most of the way there. One trap for young players though, um, there is no U in color here. So just remember that when you're looking for, what am I looking for? The color balance um, effect is what I want. So C-O-L-O-R. Yes. Very silly. Curse the Americans. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> we do actually have real quick a question from Rachel, um, which mm -hmm. is, do you have a website address for Jenna? Um, both her and Flynn were Googling and couldn't find them. Oh, all. really? Um, yeah. I mean, I was looking on her thing just the other day, so it'll be somewhere. Do Maybe do if, Google? yeah, if, if you Google it, see. Google it up. Anna, uh, Josepha. Let's see. It's maybe the spelling of it was a bit off. Ah, there um, we go. So Jenna, Josepha. And I think Flynn yeah. will grab that and post that in the chat now. Excellent. But like, Thank look you. at this kind of thing where it's like Ooh, this, yeah. this, especially this kind of creepy sort of cinemagraphs Ooh, that are that like really... Run. Oh, I love it so much. Um, I just think I think she's amazing, and I love her work. So yeah, that's that's her there. Um, amazing. Well, this is uh, everyone's homework, or oh, part one of your homework. <laughs> there might be more parts, um, but check out Jenna's book <clears throat> and uh, enjoy it. That is your homework. So what I've done here is yeah, I've just pulled the color balance um effect onto my footage mm -hmm. and it's a bit of a it's a bit of an eyeballing sort of situation um just playing with these different filters mm -hmm. trying to um take it somewhere in the direction of a color that looks vaguely like our background and it's a very imprecise sort of science mm -hmm. um i really am just moving moving dials around trying to find like a nice, nice. happy sort of blend here <laughs> um you can kind of tinker with this all day but yeah. we're getting <clears throat> we're getting somewhere that's you know vaguely in the right direction 
yeah, it's close close enough for for the stream and close enough to you know show. Yeah, you get the gist of things. The other thing you can also add here um, is the hue saturation. Mm. Um, because what I would have assumed actually is that you would uh, do like an adjustment layer in the sense that you would just do multiply or or something like that. But that's that's my Photoshop mm. brain thing. So I'm not sure if if that's a possibility as well. Um, mm. Cool. Let's try that. Puzzle. Let's okay. Let's <coughs> switch off these. And if I toggle. Ooh. Whether it could be, it might be something, yeah. You maybe your saturation. Ooh. I feel like whenever I use blending modes, I have to go through every single one <laughs> before Ooh, I find one that like time. actually works. <laughs> um, it's possible that there is one in mm. here that would do a similar sort of a thing, um, but we won't find it today, probably. <laughs> <laughs> There are, there are other ways anyway, like often mm. if I can't quite get it with color balance, I'll just chuck a hue saturation on there. Sometimes just colorizing it and then, um, you know, sort of just playing around with, where's blue? Where are we? That's purple. <laughs> Do we need more saturation? Is that part of the problem? Ooh, there uh, we go. Yeah. <laughs> And do we want a bit like, of light? Yeah, we got it. it. <laughs> Extremely excited. <laughs> Goodness me. Um, but yeah, you can you can kind of see the the gist of this, where you're just sort of trying to match your background a little bit. Mm. Um, so that's looking, you know, very. Hang cheeky. on, let me zoom out again so we can um, actually have some hope of rendering this in real time. <laughs> <coughs> so we're sort of starting to get there. Slowly but surely. And speaking of time also, we have, we are sadly beyond the half, halfway point now. Um, so we have uh, around a little under half an hour left. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. We can do lots in that time. Um, <clears throat> now, there's a few sort of tips and tricks for getting this to blend a little bit nicer. But before I show you that, let me flip back again to this letter K. I feel like one of the things that made this um, especially interesting is these lips that are on the side. Yeah. It, it changes the cool. outline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, it changes the actual outline and it adds this sort of depth that you don't otherwise get mm -hmm. when they're, you know, just if we look at this lip, that's cool. But this is like really something else, I think. Mm -hmm. Makes so, it seem a lot more 3D too. Yeah, exactly. So with that in mind, I did some... <laughs> some shots of me with just like a piece of green paper behind me so that I can kind of cut that out. Mm. So let's bring this guy to the party. And we'll just chuck it over here. Now it's a pretty similar process to what we just did with the front on tongue. Mm -hmm. But before we, we, there's one extra step and that's going to be to remove that green background. Gotcha. Um, and it is here. Is that the one we want? He... Is it chroma key? Light. No. No. I feel it's like key. key light? Key. key light. Yeah, that's the guy. I have yeah. sure that's the guy. Let's give it a whirl. Um, yes, this is the one we want. So that's going to open up this panel over here. Mm. And we just want to tell it that the screen color, as in the color that we don't want, is this green. And it's going to do a pretty good job straight away of cutting out most of the footage. You can see there's wow, like a little yeah. bit of grain. Like that was so easy. <laughs> there's a little bit of grain on the side here, which we can just kind of adjust with this screen gain here. And that's going to mm. pretty, pretty much clean up most of what we don't need. Um, whatever is missing, we can come and clean that up with the brush um, tool later. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, that's that's looking pretty good for me. 
<clears throat> and again, we're going to double click to open that up in a separate um, window mm -hmm. and grab our brush tool and just make sure we're still set to alpha. That's good. Full opacity. You, ooh, nope, that's the wrong way. You want to subtract, not add. I'm just going to get this bit over here too. And uh, what did I not do? <laughs> My playhead was not at the start. So let me go back uh -huh. and fix that. Okay. It's pretty quick. So not And much with this one, lost. maybe because uh, Flynn was saying also in the chat that multiply, it's almost always multiply. Um, mm. So if we, we mm -hmm. try out that setting, maybe uh, mm. on this one, we can see. We can I thought we did. Let me, I'm not let's sure. go back and have a look. Let's give it a whirl. Yeah, it's doing some mm. weird things. Um, yeah, it's doing the dark and yeah, it's um dark and thing. It, I agree, it is almost always multiply. <laughs> but in this instance, if it doesn't work, we can use this little technique. Yeah, which is nice. And again, just sort of softening that edge there so it's not quite as harsh mm. a line. <clears throat> What's that looking like? Better. Cool. Okay. Um, now, because we've gone and um, sort of done all the work on uh, adjusting the color of our front facing tongue, mm -hmm. we can actually go and copy those effects. So Excellent. if you were, yeah, if you were happy with, you know, you spent the time getting that absolutely spot on because I shot both of these sets of footage under the same lighting circumstances in the same mm -hmm. sort of shoot, it's basically going to be the same coloring. So I can then just um, copy and paste. And now we've got a lovely set of very dead looking blue lips. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> And I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit more and just kind of play around with the placing of that. Maybe it's sort of sitting right in the middle there. Maybe we need to rotate a little, just a smidge. I feel just learning this, this trick alone, learning how to do this is, uh gonna um, book out my entire weekend. I'm gonna be putting butts on everything. <laughs> it's truly all I want from you. <laughs> butts on everything. Well, then I must. <laughs> so now let's just give this a little second to render. <clears throat> just a moment. Ooh, I'm also gonna take some water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Woohoo! Victory! Oh yeah, yeah. It's so gross. Now there's a there's a few issues here that nothing we can't clean up. You know, I can see mm. that there's like a bit of overhang of the chin there. We can go and chop that bit off. That's fine. Mm. What I'm really loving is this extra like. That's kind of disgusting, but I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it. It very much has a. If you look at it for one second too long, or if you think about yeah. it for one second too long, it's like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not correct. Like very much goosebumps, sort of monster feeling. Yeah. Uh, it's off. It's like I Uncanny Valley. It. Yeah. More what of I this also work, love, please. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope that yeah. it sort of opens up a new realm for me. Mm. What I also love about this is that, as well as giving that cape just like a bit of extra dimension, Mm. It's also kind of resolving this little negative space issue that I had yeah. between the K and the Y. So it's filling that space in a really lovely way. And <laughs> oh, that is very satisfying, but also extremely unsettling. Um, <laughs> it, I know we, we've always kind of described your work as obnoxiously col colorful and, and playful and fun, but mainly maybe <laughs> we've discovered some new words to, to describe your work today i hope so um now obviously these these bits of footage are different lengths and i'm mm -hmm. gonna want to have them be um you know i'm probably gonna want them on screen for the duration of the thing so we can actually play around with the timing of that either we could um go into where is it time 
time stretch. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted to, we could, we, you know, drag this out and make them a more similar length. It's going to slow the movement down a little, but that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. um, or we could just repeat it so that we've got maybe the tongue pokes a few times throughout yeah, the yeah. course of the um, composition. So there's a few different little tips and tricks you can do there. But let me just quickly show you um, if I bring these guys down and just collect all of the pieces of the K. So that's that's that whole piece there. Mm -hmm. And if I make a nice little pre comp out of those. <coughs> where am I going? Pre comp. There we go. And we'll just call it K. Um, this is the step where I try and just sort of smooth that blending out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, we're just going to add some noise. Ah. It's really, it's a really basic little <laughs> trick. Um, not complicated at all. But if we zoom in on this, you know, we've still got some pretty obvious edges here and the color's not quite right, but it's more these edges because we're going from a textured 3D object mm -hmm. onto a flat That's 2D right. thing. Yeah. There's always going to be an obvious kind of border between those two. But I think when you add just a little bit of noise, not a great deal, just a little bit, mm -hmm. it feels like it sort of smooths that out and makes the piece feel singular rather than yeah sort of unifies like a hodge -hodge. It more. yeah yeah um again that's gonna that's gonna bump our render time up a fair bit it will but yeah if we, uh, actually it's not going too bad if i zoom out it's not too bad um excellent and i would probably i would probably then go and apply that grain to the whole composition at the end rather than mm. just that piece because at the yeah. moment we've just got one sort of jittery k and it's a bit out of place mm -hmm. um to make it feel like a unified piece i would probably apply that effect to the entire um yeah the entire composition at the end yeah, yeah. and but i you feel like here you go uh, I was going to say, you <laughs> use colours so beautifully, um, no surprises there. Um, but would you, if it was really difficult to, I guess, match it to the the, the video that you're inputting, would you actually end up changing the colour of the, the letters themselves just to make that blend? Yeah, that's, that's always an option. Um, you know, I'm not tied to any of this. I just picked orange and blue because I think they look good together. I also mm -hmm. want to say, I actually dressed to match my little <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> my artwork today i didn't know what to wear and i was like i'll just wear the artwork so <laughs> gold star like quadruple gold star <laughs> i attempted actually i will say i attempted to dress colorfully color yeah colorfully mm -hmm. um today yeah, it's a work but just this this whole green screen situation is still giving me grief. So um, you will have to <laughs> see my colorful my attempt at colorful um, in another stream. But I can do it. <laughs> I promise. I am capable of dressing <laughs> with color. Um, just not today. That's fine. That's totally fine. Um, there's something I think about. I mean, they're opposite ends of the color spectrum. So that's you know a super easy sort of um technique to do is just to pick colors that are completely opposite on the color spectrum on the color wheel mm. but i just think there's something about cobalt blue mm. and this sort of peachy sort of orange together that feels mm. so fizzy and like i don't know there's something that just feels sour and sherbety and mm. delicious about it that i yeah just i really love this color combo um, it really just, yeah, hits the spot. It's wonderful. <laughs> um, I got distracted a little bit because I saw the overlay uh, that Flynn did, which is that you have said, but I think it was 23 times. And I've said oh, it's that it? Yeah. So we, we got to no. gotta up the butt count. That can't be right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, so but, 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 but. <laughs> And myself, <laughs> um, 
but also to and now I'm just gonna say it all the time, ha, because I want to win. Uh, not competitive <laughs> at all. Um, we do have around 25 minutes left from the stream, so for you Lovely. that's a heads up for you but if we have any more uh but 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 or unrelated but questions uh for sophie today let us know in the chat and we will ask them um the other thing that i wanted to have a little chat about which we we might not actually demonstrate but just mm. to have a chat about is um audio editing mm. that was a big part of the Alphabet project. It was something that I had wanted to do for a while, but I'd never really sort of blended audio with my animations before, mm. even though I worked in radio for many years before becoming a designer. So um, it should have clicked a little sooner than it did perhaps, but um, we eventually circled back here. Um, just adding another, another dimension mm -hmm. to the whole yeah. sort of piece. Mm. So, you know, a static piece is lovely an animated piece brings something else, Ooh. but then putting that layer of audio underneath mm. it, especially like, if the audio is, yes. yeah, especially if it's something a bit unexpected. Mm -hmm. So maybe not taking the most literal direction, you know, like maybe it's a completely left of center piece of audio that is another surprise in the mm -hmm. composition. Yeah. So I that's mean, something that I kind of- As funny as it is, it can't always be farts. <laughs> you've so got to really off. ration yeah you've got to ration the farts out it's mm. true um <laughs> but there's so many so many little moments of magic that I found that I could infuse just through audio mm. um and so I'd be interested to hear what people think about this one because I would I mean I've got some ideas for this mm. and you know you can you can jump back onto the um Instagram feed later on and hopefully I'll post the finished thing but I'm interested to hear what people might think this should sound like um, yeah that's a great that's a great prompt uh for chat sadly we we aren't able to make uh the audio work so we can't um play you examples during the stream um but if you look at sophie's instagram again you can look through all the different uh butts and letters that um she's created with some excellent sound effects i will say for me personally having um listened to quite a few of them uh, I was, as i was making <laughs> the promotional assets i do think the the giggle that you have in the i think it was the the cigarette one or the c yeah one, was just very absolutely cute. delightful. Um, <laughs> Flynn is suggesting a squeaky sound. Um, Ooh, for which I think maybe. See, I'm wondering with the the butt butting butts that you yeah, have butts. like a good boing, like a like a some sort of boing. Yeah, definitely. Mm. We need a boing. We need a giggle. Um, see, I like, thought. Mm -hmm. I thought you could kind of go in a few directions with the butts hitting each other. It could be that sort of boing. I mean, I love a boing. Who doesn't love a boing? Um, but it could also be champagne glasses clinking, you know, like a, a cheers. Or it could be some sort of like deeper wobble kind of sound because we do have mm -hmm. this like reverberation happening where we've got a bit of... Um, a bit of aftermath movement, I suppose, mm -hmm. from the initial clashing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's, you know, there's a, a little universe to explore Could of it be a potential clap? there. Like thunderclap kind mm -hmm. of idea. That's a possibility. Um, yeah. I also, when you, mentioned the, when you mentioned the champagne, I was just imagining to like Victorian era mustachioed men like cheersing like, oh, yes, quite. <laughs> and just being very <laughs> cool about it um, but that's just how my brain works um so Ty, do you have any more suggestions <laughs> or ideas um feel free to um my butt um we'd love to hear it um i'm picturing the little hand waving you know when someone when you're a kid and you're playing with a stick mm -hmm. and you like swish it through the air and it makes that kind of like yes. noise like you're cutting yeah. air i'm kind of picturing that like a with the hand doing the little mm. wave 
Um, because I think that will also make it feel like just way too enthusiastic. It's mm. like, it, it's waving so hard that it's cutting through air kind of thing. Um, <laughs> which I think would be nice. Yeah. Mm. And then for the tongue poking. Mm, I think a teasy, like teasing tongue, like you're poking your tongue at like someone. Like a nanny nanny -na sort of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is definitely not a sound I thought I would make, uh, <laughs> um, but it makes sense. I also kind of with the with the hand because it's waving. I'm imagining like oh like a ooh, hello kind of thing. Mm. But this is just my mind. Now you've unleashed. The we should um the bottom. Is of my it brain. okay for me? <laughs> Am I allowed to um? Take the audio from Mrs. Doubtfire and just do the hello. <laughs> I think if you only use 10%, and since this is for a stream, it is for educational purposes, <laughs> you might be okay. But don't quote me on that. Maybe I'll just do myself doing that and then it's parody. Yes. And it's my own original material. Miss Doubtfire. <laughs> hello. That is something that I that is something that I actually did end up doing a bit when I was um, pulling together the audio for the alpha, but a lot of the time I can find what I need just from, you know, generic mm. stock libraries or whatever. But sometimes if I'm after something very specific and it's really hard to search for, like when I did the letter S and mm -hmm. it was me, hang on, I'll, I'll show you. When I did the letter S, you used it beautifully in the promo material. Um, okay. S is for bum shuffle. <clears throat> and I wanted the because it's, it's such an awkward movement, right? Mm -hmm. To shuffle along on your butt. There is nothing mm -hmm. more awkward than that. I wanted the audio to be someone just kind of going, <laughs> as they like <clears throat> struggling mm -hmm. to move along. And I couldn't for the life of me think what keywords I searched for yeah. to find that exact piece of audio. It's and in the end I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna- too specific. <laughs> yeah. I ended up just opening up voice memos on my phone and just doing a few variations, bringing that in and it worked a treat. So sometimes, um, you know, if you know exactly what you're looking for, that's mm. kind of a good way to do it. Mm. To just, yeah, make, make the audio yourself. Yeah. I'm also sensing a potential like side side career of just doing very specific comedic uh, foley and sound effects for anime. <laughs> uh, like a custom. I didn't want to say beforehand. Mm -hmm. This is actually the launch of Sophiella Audio Incorporated. So, um... <laughs> no, it's not, folks. It's not. <laughs> no, but you know, I'm open to it. It could be something. Um, I also want to ask. So we've got the H, the two E's and the K kind of happening. Mm -hmm. But what are the C and the Y going to do? I feel like they're a little left out of the party at the moment and they need to have their own moment. So we've got a little face on the Y. Maybe mm -hmm. there's something we could play with that. Or maybe we could add, um, you mentioned the letter C before. This guy's got a little cute little, little patootie tush. that just does, <laughs> just does a, little, a little shimmy. You know, maybe that's something that we can. I Where did. is the butt of the Y though? Does it go? I feel like it needs to be here, but then mm -hmm. the tongue is. <laughs> it could just be like that. That the smiley face just does a little. You know what? It could do a duck face because on the side, that might be <laughs> that will be complicated for the stream. Um, but maybe it's just like a happy giggle, uh, kind of like the face on on the see i will say another yeah. another idea that i had and it's potentially absolutely too ambitious for the 20 not 20 the the 10 something 10 and a little bit more minutes we have left today is if mm -hmm. somehow the c could basically invert like that and then boop and a little fart comes out so the c <laughs> <comes> <laughs> Um, so from from where are we farting with this C? So is it gonna farting be sort of in the middle from the left or? side, yes. So it kind of like, goes in and then out. I don't know okay. if that makes sense. We certainly most likely do not have time for it because we do have 10, uh, 10, 11 minutes left. Um, but that you is good for thought. Let's, let's just give it a whirl because we do have time. 
So let's, I didn't have the anchor points where you were talking about, but I've just mm. added them in, super mm. easy to do. Um, and again, that's just gonna be another little path tool transformation. So if we lock that there and then dive in, where are we? Okay. So we want this guy and this guy. And uh, actually maybe we need some more. Yeah, maybe and one we more. We need a couple more points. points. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Great minds. <laughs> Great butts think alike. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's so fun. <laughs> fun here, everyone. Um, <laughs> so, so much fun. Okay. So we're going to do a little bit of this and then we want, where are we? We want this to be a nice curve. So just it's bring a wonderful down. feeling seeing your dreams come true right in front of your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pleased to aim. Okay, so we've got, let's have a little zoom out. Boop. Okay, so he's going to have a bit of anticipation and then, and then when the little toot comes out, are we going to have... It could either be cloud or maybe um, just some animated lines like Some the lines yeah the that's why i'm thinking path tool yeah that you've shown us before yeah and then i think because we when the lines come out we probably want a little bit of movement on mm. like maybe we want the cheeks to kind of come out a bit or something mm. i don't know maybe, maybe I'm... they like constrict a little or something <laughs> So many ways to make a butt fart, I tell you. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like there's something in that. And then, so if we do the lines, so we'll need some new layers for this. Um, what do we want? We want a shape layer and we just want to, probably just with the pen tool, I reckon we can do this. Mm. Just like, like a little line and where is our stroke? Can't see it. There we go. <laughs> butt cap. <laughs> it's not actually what we want. We want a round cap, but <laughs> um, we also don't need this layer to be that long because this is going to happen real quick. And then this will probably just be a little bit of a our, our trusty friend trim paths I reckon mm, is probably trim what paths. we need for this That's guy. That's what I was looking for. Um, my, yeah, one of my favorite little After Effects tools. Mm. <clears throat> so if we add a trim path and then we want it to start at zero. Oops, where are we? I cannot see all the things I need to. There we go. So start at zero and then we want it to toot out and then finish. And then we'll offset these a little bit so that we, let me explain that. So at the moment, um, we can have it start, complete, remain for a while and then undo, which looks like this, which is not quite right. Mm. What we want is to not have the entire line visible at the, at the same time. And we do that by just kind of overlapping these start and finish keyframes. So it's a bit more of this sort of movement. You know your thoughts well. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, and again, that's we probably want that to happen quite quickly. Doot. And then as always, adding a bit of ease on there to just ice it up. Cute. <laughs> and then we can um, we can just duplicate this layer a couple times and move it around. Cause maybe we want this guy here and maybe we want, I don't know, maybe the middle one can be a bit longer. 
And then we can duplicate again <clears throat> and bring this guy down. And maybe we want this guy to be a bit shorter, perhaps. Mm. Ooh, not that. No, no, no. Wrong lover. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. The Empress in Groove is maybe one of my all-time favorite movies. Oh, excellent. That's what you I were quoting just then, right? Yes, no, it was, 100%. And I'm so <laughs> glad you got it, because not everyone understands all my extremely obscure references, but... It's so funny, and it really holds up, and I watched it not that long ago, and I still, like, I could remember just about every line, and I still mm. laughed at them all. So good. Kronk is just a comedic genius. Mm, absolutely. I think I might have to rewatch it tonight then. Maybe that's my homework. To yeah. the movie. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Okay, we, now we've got our little toot lines coming out. Um, <laughs> and we can probably offset these just one or two frames, I reckon, so that we have, where's our first one? That's our first one. And then... <laughs> Let me reorder these so that they are in the order they are appearing. So we've got one, two, three. And I'll maybe just want to move these. Probably just one keyframe because the, the action is happening very quickly. Mm. So now instead of all starting at once, we've got, you know, top, middle and bottom happening. And it's, it's a really subtle adjustment, but I think things like that do make a difference to the energy of an animation mm. and how dynamic it feels it feels mm. more kind of considered and more yeah um, I was gonna say realistic but nothing about this is realistic at no. all <laughs> the movement feels I guess a bit more sort yeah. of um anthropomorphic yeah, yeah exactly Cute. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, so now that. we just need to resolve our why I feel like mm. that's the one one letter that maybe oh no we said he was gonna do a little giggle or something yeah i think if we have time for it for we do sadly have just four maybe even three minutes to go uh so maybe it's a simple like bobbing um bobbing 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 animation uh and then just to to feel like we've completed the the word uh, and yeah. uh, we can tinker uh with that more off stream so at the moment, its mouth is a separate piece to its eyes. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to move them together, I'll probably pre-comp them. It's just the easiest way mm -hmm. um, to collect those together. <clears throat> I'm also going to move the, whenever you pre-comp something, it makes the center point of that composition like in the middle of the canvas rather than in the middle of the piece that you just were working on. And that can affect things like rotation pretty dramatically. So mm -hmm. I'll show you what I mean. If I start to rotate, it's using this little kind of crosshairs here as the oh, center point, which is yeah. going to be really problematic for us. Um, it's a very easy fix. And it's just um, the keyboard shortcut is Y, or you can use this pan behind tool here. And you're just mm -hmm. moving that anchor point, uh, sorry, the, those little sort of center points to the mm -hmm. middle of the actual element that we're working with. And now when we rotate, it's a lot um, we've got a lot more control and it's a lot more specific. Excellent. Um, so that's a nice little trick there. So what are we thinking? Is it just like Actually. a little rotate like this, or maybe it sort of moves because there's on the letter I, we had the little face kind of moves to the side a bit and then comes back, which is kind of fun. We could do something like that. Sadly, we won't have time for it, I'm afraid. We've uh, butted our last butt. Uh, so, Flynn, <laughs> if you will, could you please let us know what the final tally is as we... Um... <laughs> no, we should guess first. What do you think Ooh, the total I is? I think... Oh, no, we oh, got sorry, it. Oh, put it on the screen. Oh, <laughs> nine, one, okay, we both butted valiantly. Um, <laughs> Can I just say, having that come up as like a ticker tape on the mm. bottom of the stream is making me so happy. <laughs> I'm so glad. Well, it was That's an absolute right <laughs> joy uh, 
doing this stream with you, Sophie. I can't wait to My pleasure. do more with you in the future. Thank you everyone mm -hmm. for tuning in. We will of course be back with more streams next week. Probably not the battle related, but uh, I'll do my best. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, everyone. And have a beautiful butty day. Yeah. <laughs> nah, go with it. It's a thing. <laughs> Going with it. Amazing. Thank you, everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you. See you later. See ya. <laughs>